Good morning, everyone. I would uh, like to briefly talk about our experience with the application process uh, from what was already mentioned, the NEPIT project. And this abbreviation stands for Network of Elva Evaluation and Propagation of Interference Training. Uh, so it's some topic from my chair. So I come from the chair of electromagnetic compatibility, as already mentioned, from um, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information Technology. And I will I won't go into the technical details of this project. It's more really about um, the application process itself. So I will try to briefly talk about um, how to get an idea or where to get an idea for the project, or maybe a little bit how this process was. Then um, what was already talked about before a little bit, what is the process of writing the application? What are the challenges associated with this? And then finally, after some time, um, you get a positive response and you get a grant. And so what are the next steps then? So to look back a little bit, the first contact that I had with this Horizon 2020 program was around 10 years ago. There was some invitation for a similar um, information session like this one, but of course it was not virtually, it was not in an online conference, it was on site. And there was a German one. I think there was also, uh, as you can see, an English invitation. And you can read the name here if you have good eyes. Martina Hagen, who is also present in the meeting today. So this is obviously a topic that um, is, is around there for a couple of time. So, But to be honest, um, nothing really happened then because um, as a young researcher and early stage, uh, stage researcher, uh, you have to do lots of other stuff. And I have an unlimited contract with our university here. So I do lots of teaching, I do lots of research, um, and so I um, I was, to be honest, not really interested in, in um, doing writing applications for funding. Um, so for a long time, nothing really happened, uh, no proposal, no initiative, no, no application, nothing like this. But then during some... Um, some conference we discussed with a group of colleagues um, about a possible project. Um, and we, we found this doctoral networks very interesting because it's, um, um, it's for a longer period of time. And um, it's really meant to be that you have this larger group and you have this network and you have these advantages and opportunities that arise from this, that people can do this, the contents that you have uh, different universities, different countries within this consortium, uh, that you also have companies within the consortium. And this looked to be very attractive, to be honest. Okay, so... Um, Yeah, we, 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 we developed some idea um, on this NEPIT project and then we need to write an application for sure. So, you know the saying, 5% inspiration, 95% uh, <laughs> transpiration, this is really for sure. It's a hard process as it was already mentioned and it's, it's not really only the, the technical part and the content. Um, I think this is the inspirational part, um, but... Um, Be before you write this in a larger consortium, think of an idea how to arrange the process, how to make it a good digital process and not just an electrified process. And for sure, it's not a good idea to, uh, to take this Word template that is offered there on the website, um, edit it, and then um, send it back and forth in an email attachment where the, the, the name of the file gets longer and longer and longer as people append some information, set up some cloud storage, think of a good digital efficient way how to write the contract, uh, how to write the, the, the application. This is, this is something that I can recommend for sure. Then second thing, um, as was already mentioned before, try to show this network. What is really the benefit of the network? Why it's not only... 10 or 8 or 12 or whatnot um, applications for work packages in, in one bigger, larger application. Really try to show the, the mutual dependencies between this and the, the advantages that grow out of this network. And, and think of this if you are from um, 
from mathematics or physics and engineering think of this power rule yeah so you have you have two people working together okay you get twice or three times or four times the um, uh, the options and then if you have five it's even more if you have 10 then it, it really explodes on how many mutual connections you could have between these people within a network um then you need to write a really 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 good proposal um and so this is the first one that we wrote in 2019 and there this uh marie spodowska curie it, it took me about a day uh, yesterday to to finally figure out how to pronounce this correctly um so these actions there already existed but it's what it was not called doctoral training network it was called innovative training networks itn and within this itn uh, we already had the snippet project and on this side you can read here even if it's very small maybe um University of Twente is in there from the Netherlands. Then we have our university in Magdeburg. We have University, Technical University of Wroclaw. Uh, greetings to Magdalena. And we have some university from Italy and Eindhoven once again from the Netherlands. And we have some company from Germany. And we have lots of other companies from the associated countries. And so overall, I think at this time we had something like 12 work packages and also 12 um positions for doctoral candidates but um, then at first you need to be patient because I think we also submitted this in November and then it takes of course some time to review to review to review and I think finally in um, in May or so in the following year we get some response uh, which looked like this but you also need to be prepared for disappointment um, so you can see that the, the, our overall score was very good, um, 94.4%. I think from 94.6 um, or 0.8 um, applications got funded. So we were just very, very, very uh, close to the, um, to the border, to the limit. Um, Yeah, so we were a bit disappointed, but then we discussed in the consortium what to do and also maybe with um, our EU funding um, administration office here in Magdeburg and at the other partner universities. And so we finally decided um, to um, review or to rework the application just a tiny bit because we, we, we thought it, it is still very good and still very actual and um, that it's, it's a good package overall. So we just resubmitted. So in the next year, our score was not that good. Uh, we just resubmitted, um, did some very small changes. Um, our score was again not that good. And we just resubmitted again. <laughs> and then we had like, a very good score. And we, we finally got this message uh, that everyone is waiting for. Congratulations, your proposal has reached the stage of grant agreement preparation. And so... This was then really the start of our project. So you, you, you really need to be patient sometimes and you need to be, <laughs> what was also said, resilient maybe a little bit. And, and maybe you also need to, bit, uh, to have a bit of luck. Okay, so then you, you, you have the grant. What do you do next? Um, first step, of course, you set up a website. Um, you can find our website here. I can maybe, I think I've prepared the browser in advance so I can show you the website. You can find all the project details there if you are interested in the technical details. Um, and then of course you, uh, you need to set up dates for the recruitment. And these are our 10 doctoral candidate positions. Three and four are located um, at Magdeburg. And... Uh, you need to, of course, somehow advertise them. What for sure helps in advertising is was this also already mentioned here on, on the website. Connect with us on LinkedIn. So we have um, a LinkedIn account or group for this doctoral network that, of course, all the supervisors and all the industrial partners are associated with and that you can also use to, um, I don't know, make people aware of the options Uh, use it for recruitment and then we have been kicking off the project officially last year in September and is, as it was also already mentioned you should try to um, you, you, you should 
engage people to be mobile. You, you should uh, force mobility, but uh, you should also be um, saving travel costs, let's say, in terms of that people should not fly around the globe for no reason. So we scheduled this kickoff meeting at a conference, at some scientific conference that most of the consortium members um, attend anyhow. And this was the EMC Europe conference. EMC is electromagnetic compatibility. This is the main conference for us within Europe. And it was in Krakow last year in Poland. So we had our um, kickoff meeting there. And we will also have a consortium meeting at uh, the very same conference, EMC Europe conference this year, Uh, which will be in Bruges in Belgium, even if no Belgian university is associated to our consortium. And then, of course, you need to advertise the PhD position. So we did this on the portal of our university, but also on this website and also on LinkedIn and also on some other platforms. Um, and so this is the, the first one. This is the second one. And I don't know how successful we were, but we got for these 10 doctoral positions, we got around a little bit more than 100, uh, than 100 applications, um, which, is, which is okay. But from my point of view, it could have been more um, because you need to take into account that at least a third of these applications are not really useful at all for the project because these people are civil engineers or biologists or computer scientists or something like this, but they have no clue about um, electromagnetic compatibility or not even electrical engineering at all. So there's, there's a huge number of not really relevant applications uh, within this 100 plus um, applications. And... I mean, taking into account that, for example, me, myself on LinkedIn, that I have a huge audience of EMC people, um, engineers, and also people working in the industry um, that all got, got also these messages about our, our positions. Um, then working as a PhD candidate for such a doctoral network at some university is maybe with all the options as an engineer that you have in the industry is maybe not super attractive for people anymore. So then we have been also kicking off the project internally within OVGU um, at the beginning of uh, this year. And now we are currently interviewing the candidates uh, with the consortium. So you can see me here and uh, some other people. And we do this via Teams for sure because we have lots of international candidates from India, from Pakistan, from Iran, from African countries, but also from within Europe. Okay, so um, we are looking forward to the things to come. It, it will be still a long road until we finish our project. Um, and we have... Um, from my point of view, not, not really, really started yet, for sure, um, because we are just in the process of interviewing and finding proper candidates. Um, so all this that was mentioned, uh, the research, the summer schools, the training opportunities, all the um, intersexual and, and um, also extracurricular activities, process with graduate schools and, and uh, future skills training and so on. This is still in the process of planning. But, but we, are, we are very excited um, what will happen. So this concludes my talk. Um, thanks for your attention. And I would be happy to answer some questions.